When DeBaby was brought in for questioning by law enforcement in Miami regarding an alleged robbery, it was evident that he was unimpressed with how the authorities were handling the case. You can see Prince up in the air down there on the hood. The recently released interrogation video captured the rapper at the police station engaging with a couple of officers discussing the incident. The popular artist faced accusations of being involved in jumping a man and robbing him, along with his team. There were additional allegations that they even doused the man in apple juice before departing. Throughout the interrogation, Do Baby consistently denied any role in the alleged robbery and found humor in how the police were handling the situation. Before his official questioning began, the artist was seen entering the elevator and couldn't help but question one of the officers about his supposed motive for robbing someone. Allegation is allegation. Until what? Until proven. Thank you. So why am I handcuffs? That's the he confidently pointed to his lavish chains and designer clothes, saying, Take one look at me and tell me if I'm robbing anything. I'm on the fucking Forbes list. My N. Forbes list, my nigga. The Forbes list. Robbery. <laughs> Baby even lightened the mood by joking about the lingering Christmas tree in the office, despite the holiday having passed a week ago. He expressed annoyance, saying, They lazy too. They ain't even take their damn Christmas tree down. The entire video spans about 45 minutes, showcasing the entire interrogation process, and it's evident that Dubaby was not feeling it. His demeanor throughout the video suggests that he was dismissive of the allegations against him and unimpressed with the handling of the case by the police. In January 2020, the rapper Dubaby, whose real name is Jonathan Kirk, was scheduled to perform at a Miami nightclub. However, Things took a turn when the club owner only paid him $20,000 out of the $30,000 owed. This led to a heated altercation, where the victim claimed that Do Baby punched him multiple times before other members of his crew joined in the attack. The victim's phone, credit card, and $80 in cash were stolen during the incident. The only evidence of what happened came from a hidden CCTV recording. After the incident, Dubaby fled the scene in a black SUV but returned to his hotel a few hours later. To his surprise, the police were waiting for him, along with the two victims, to arrest him as part of an ongoing investigation. Dubaby initially refused to cooperate with the officers, even refusing to give his name, despite being informed of his Miranda rights. Strangely, he decided not to request legal counsel, which is typically the recommended course of action in such situations. In the interrogation room, Dubaby was determined to make things difficult for the detectives. He carefully chose his words, denying any involvement in the incident and even challenging the accusation that someone brought him $20,000 at the hotel. He claimed that the person lied and said the money was for an event on the 31st, which he refused and walked away from. Moreover, Dubaby mentioned that a promoter had booked him in the hotel but didn't pay for his stay. He argued that in his room, he had a considerable amount of hard-earned money, legally earned, totaling close to a quarter million dollars. He questioned why he would need to steal $80 and an iPhone if he regularly deals with much larger amounts. While it may seem like Dubaby is flaunting his wealth, his point is that he's involved in significant deals and makes large payments, making the alleged theft insignificant in comparison. However, the detectives are determined to investigate the matter further, considering the complexity of the situation. From Kirk's perspective, he firmly maintains his innocence in the alleged crime. He has no reason to commit such an act, and he can clearly explain where he was at the time of the incident. On the other hand, the detective believes a crime did occur, and they're focusing on Kirk since his vehicle was in the vicinity. In the interrogation room, Kirk knows how to handle the situation. He understands the importance of not speaking without a lawyer present. Kirk is confident in his ability to handle an interrogation, and he knows that having legal counsel rarely works against him. He believes he's currently in control of the situation and wants to keep it that way. During the discussion, Kirk expresses frustration and disbelief at the allegations. He asserts that nothing happened and he had no involvement whatsoever. He feels the detectives are not being truthful and are manipulating the situation to force a confession from him. 
In reality, when police conduct an interrogation without immediately charging someone, it's often because they lack enough evidence for a straightforward conviction. In such cases, they may attempt to elicit a confession from the suspect. It's crucial to remain silent and ask for a lawyer if you believe the evidence against you is weak or questionable. At one point, the detectives leave the room to give Kirk time alone. This tactic is meant to make the suspect anxious and potentially more likely to confess. However, in Kirk's case, he remains composed and even manages to doze off, seemingly unbothered by the strategy. Kirk's belongings were left in his hotel room, even though he hadn't been convicted yet. He was the prime suspect in an ongoing investigation, so he had to spend some time in jail while they gathered evidence and figured out what to do. The authorities needed to decide how to handle his belongings while he was locked up. Kirk, however, adamantly refused to let them touch his stuff and insisted that the hotel deal with it. Kirk was facing a possible sentence of up to 15 years in prison, along with a $10,000 fine, and potentially other charges related to the assault if enough evidence was gathered. But the evidence wasn't in Kirk's favor, and the block security video was the only piece of evidence indicating the crime took place. After spending 48 hours in jail, he was released, and the baby involved in the incident was also sent home. Two months later, all charges against Kirk were dropped and he remained free. In 2022, another significant event emerged in the world of rap music, shedding light on the Miami Beach police interrogation of the renowned rapper Dubaby, whose real name is Jonathan Kirk. The video recording of this intense interrogation, which occurred in June of the previous year, was finally released to the public. The purpose of the interview was in connection to a shooting incident that took place outside the popular restaurant, Prime 112, which resulted in two people being injured. Throughout this hour-long conversation with the police, DeBaby, who hails from North Carolina, adamantly maintained that he acted in self-defense during the incident. According to his account, two individuals attempted to steal his entourage's vehicle and even tried to harm him outside the restaurant. As the officers probed him about the event, he firmly denied any criminal activity on his part. The video provides a glimpse of DeBaby's tension and unease during the interrogation, where he challenged the officer's line of questioning. He expressed concerns that they were trying to incriminate him, leading him to respond defensively. When the officers asked about whether he had a weapon at the time of the shooting, he resisted their inquiries. In a calm and composed manner, DaBaby recounted a concerning incident that unfolded as he and his friends were leaving Prime 112. He expressed that things took an unsettling turn when he noticed several white trucks parked outside the restaurant. As they were exiting, he became aware that these trucks belonged to the people who would later become the aggressors in the situation. Throughout his account, DeBaby emphasized that he had a skilled legal representative, implying that he would cooperate fully with the proper legal process. He expressed his desire to share his perspective with the public so they could understand the situation from his point of view. DeBaby recounted the incident with a clear explanation. He emphasized that the individuals involved didn't actually break into his house. Instead, they managed to jump a fence to gain access to his property. He described how he found them, saying they were wearing hoodies and were huddled behind a wall, which understandably raised his concern. At the time, DeBaby was inside his studio, engrossed in putting together the track list for his upcoming album. It was then that he received an urgent call from his contractor, who was working outside. The contractor informed him about the presence of these individuals on the football field on his property. The tone of the contractor's voice conveyed the seriousness of the situation, prompting DeBaby to go outside and assess the matter. He took immediate action to ensure his safety and that of his property. DeBaby reassured that the threat was neutralized and that he was able to bring the situation under control. Initially, he was taken aback and couldn't comprehend why someone would attempt to trespass on his property, especially when it was clearly marked with numerous no trespassing signs. Throughout the encounter, DeBaby felt a sense of unease, suspecting ill intentions from these individuals. Even after they were removed from his property, he remained cautious and vigilant, still uncertain about the true reason behind their intrusion. 
He conducted a thorough inspection of his property to determine how they gained access. Despite the uncertainties, he was grateful that the situation was handled without any harm to the intruder. Overall, the incident left the baby with a sense of caution and a reminder of the importance of maintaining security and being vigilant, even in what should be the safety of his own home.